Uche, and uh, my namesake at the same time. <laughs> um, this wasn't planned. It wasn't planned for me to talk to you, so that's why I say it's a pleasure. Okay. Um, this is this is one of what I call um, Sport. So I think you should give him a round of applause. Um, maybe, maybe because you don't know, maybe because you don't know about his business. So I'm, I'm going to talk to him. I want to talk to you a little bit about his business and he will take it up. Full Stand is an e-platform that tries to connect farmers and uh, farmers and their buyers on the same platform. So there's an exchange, a marketplace for food. Raw food, cooked food is a marketplace, okay? So, um, so I'm not going to be asking you what Full Stand is about because I have already told them. So, so, so what I'm going to be asking you is, why did you go into that space? I mean, what, what, why did you go into that space? It's not just a marketplace for um, connecting farmers to buyers. It, uh, it comes to bring uh, all the fragmented uh, food sellers in the ecosystem. Includes the farmers, the food traders, the grocery shops, the food manufacturers, and uh, the eateries. Connect them to buyers. Yeah, what's the good question? So, 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 why did you go into that space? Okay, I have been in the food business for a while. Uh, before I entered school in the University of Calabar, I had a plan. I wanted to establish a chain of roasted food joints. I saw how the two young men were um, um, operating, the counselors and the rest of them. So, I wanted a branded chain of um, roasted food around Nigeria. So I set up uh, what they call roast levels, yeah, a little kiosk with a couple of people there, all kinds of roasted food, seafood roasted food, potatoes, and all. But it failed after about uh, seven months. I was very young then and inexperienced, and I was about entering school then. Technically, I've done a couple of food business. I've sold cows. I invested in uh, all these uh, bookiemen, all these allergies who bring cows from the north. And uh, when we buy the cow, we sell it to retailers in, in uh, retailers who, who butcher it and uh, sell uh, in pieces. You know, I've done a lot of food business. So I saw the pains consumers experienced. I saw the pains the sellers experienced in the food ecosystem, both from the supply side and the demand side. And I said, with technology, we can leverage on technology to uh, simplify the way Africans and Nigerians especially buy and sell food. Because I don't need to be in my house and I'm thinking, oh, I want to go to the market and I'm thinking, oh, it's going to take me time. If I get to the market, it's muddy, it's dirty, it's disorganized. I spend like three or four hours to shop for food. Or I'm looking for a farmer, maybe I'm looking for 10 tons of potatoes and I'm asking myself, ah, where do I get 10 tons of, of, of potatoes? Which farmer has the capacity for that? Or I'm in the office and I want to eat lunch and I'm thinking, ah, how can I drive down to the next fast food to buy food? So I feel there's a way we can simplify it. Let's bring all the millions of food sellers, both the farmers, the traders, the whole nine yards. Give them a single platform so that anybody anywhere can just through their phone or computer or mobile device, uh, get what they want within their area or nationwide and it gets delivered to them. Wow, wow. Okay, so if you were dispassionate yeah. about food and about, about entrepreneurship, why did you spend the time to do law? Okay, so some choices we made, we just make out of uh, ignorance and um, uh, you just follow the trend in the society. I am not against formal education, but I feel it waste our time. Because the years we went to school, we have had the most best time for, for our life. When our brains are very active. Yeah, but I uh, actually didn't set out to read law. My, I was a science student in school. I wanted to study computer engineering, but I failed. So I just improperly, impossibly said, okay, I want to study law. I want to go to this school and get out and face my life passion. So I went to the University of Calabar, did my five years in law, went to Nigerian Law School, and I said, the fellowship is what I'm all about. I have to focus on this. And wow. there I am. Wow, wow. Uh, I think we should be. Yeah. Now, let's talk about, let's talk about technology. Um, we're talking about lawyer. We're talking about somebody providing technology solution. So, I mean, how do we marry them? Because, yes, um, you're, not a tech, you're not a tech person. So let's talk about how you do your stuff. Okay. 
Um, I've always loved technology. Before the advent of, before internet became very popular in Nigeria, I never owned a computer. I said, this computer must be something wonderful. Internet must be something wonderful. If I can stay here and receive pay from somebody, my cousin in the UK, that should be more, I can be done with it. I started going to Sabaka first, then it was about 400 naira an hour. I started browsing, I started learning how to use the computer. Along the line, I started making money and I bought computers, I started using it. Then I discovered that you can do a lot. I discovered platforms like Elans, Freelancer and Guru. I started bidding for jobs. At first I was bidding for uh, writing jobs. I was writing articles for blogs and websites abroad. And I said there should be more to this. And um, I started doing all that. I was a lawyer, I was a law student then. I started doing legal research for law firms in the US and UK. And I was getting a little money. And um, I said, okay, uh, the mobile uh, revolution, mobile apps and the rest of them were all blossoming. And I had contact with a Canadian software firm, AJS of Softwares. And uh, I know I had some marketing flame me. I started bidding for jobs for them. Mobile application jobs, web development jobs, and the rest of them. So I learned a lot about it. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a developer, I'm not a coder, but I'm a leader. I'm an organizer and understand the vision I had. So I have to learn everything. So, so it takes an organizer to actually be an entrepreneur, more like. I think I think we should we should be able to um, uh, we should be internalizing some of these things. Okay, um, you 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 were featured in Demo Africa in 2014. Yes. Um, yeah. You know. You remember I told you guys I, I wasn't successful. Well, he was successful. And um, Tony Illuminati Foundation. Um, we entered that. We also entered that competition. You were selected. I wasn't selected. And and I told and I said to him, I said, boss, you're going to tell me, you're going to tell me what you do that I don't know yet. And it has been difficult getting him to tell me. So he's here now, so he's going to tell me. So can you tell me? That's no magic wand. It's just that I um, I uh, I'm very persistent. I'm stubborn. When I have a vision, and I validated that vision. I think I do everything possible to make sure it works. For Demo Africa, I did my first Demo Africa application in 2013. When I was, when we were building the full starting platform, I lost. Wow. I wasn't the target. Wow. Uh, the next day, when full starting was still in beta testing, uh, opportunity came out for Demo Africa application. I applied. I uh, affected my pitch because I knew it was all about presentation. The organizers might not know what you have in mind. You might, you know what you have in mind, but it's hard to present it. <laughs> what did I do? I have to perfect my pitch. I have to look at other pitches that uh, got foundations, that got uh, sort of funding, and that got, um, um, you know, not notable pitches. I looked at AM, AMD, I looked at, um, was it um, some other pitches like that, and I perfected my pitch. And I was, the first person that called me to tell me that uh, I was selected for Demo yeah. Africa. I was actually in my uh, nephew's uh, funeral mm. when I got that uh, call. Yeah, so it was kind of a uh, joy and uh, pain. Mm. Yeah. So for, for Tony Lumelu, I think about the market in Africa. So we are chosen as among the top tech uh, startups that they want to integrate with. Now what WeChat does, WeChat is more engaging than WhatsApp. WeChat you can play games, you can buy, you can sell, you can do a lot of things. All like WhatsApp that is strictly chat. And WeChat is, is the most monetized uh, 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 chat uh, instant messenger application. So we are chosen. So very soon we are expecting uh, the full integration. So that if you are WeChat, you can be chatting with uh, your friend and you can order food. For them through which foodstandy.com. You can be chatting on WeChat and you can buy food through foodstandy.com. That's good. That's good. That's good. Then we sent it to um, Chivas Regal. That was a competition indeed. They're uh, looking for um, 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 like um, startups from each country for their social entrepreneurship uh, um, program where they fund like one million dollars on, uh, on selected startups from around the world. So yesterday we got information that we are choosing as a among the main finalists in, in Nigeria. So my next week we'll be doing a good camp in Lagos to, um, you know, possibly if we are lucky, we'll be among the finalists and if we are lucky, we'll be among the ones that present Nigeria, which is what we are praying for. Wow. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me highlight something. Uh, you know, you know, I said, I pin him, I pin him down now to tell me the things we've not been able to meet for him to tell me. So it turns out that the difference has been consistent. Um, whereas he, where, whereas he, 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 um, he applied in 2013 and lost, I applied in 2014, and I've never bothered to apply again, okay? So consistency. 
Um, <coughs> let's talk. Let's talk a little about. Um, let's talk a little about. Um, okay, before then, let's talk about what has this competitions. What what impact have they made on your business? I like to know. I like to know what the what the traction has been like. Okay, um, well, the, the competitions they help us a lot. We see a lot of people, mentors, we get new ideas, fresh ideas. Like uh, um, last uh, was it uh, last uh, October, we were among the federal government delegation to GTS in Dubai. You know, we saw a lot of innovations there. When we came back, we discovered that there's a lot we need to do that we're still learning. We saw foreign solutions, you understand, for their localized problems. Now, General Fusnadi has been doing uh, well, averaging well, but not to my satisfaction. We have over a thousand sellers around the country, farmers, traders, restaurants, even in cities where we don't have fiscal presence. At present, we have fiscal presence only in Lagos and Portacot. We have a branch in Lagos and our main office is in Portacot. But we have, funny enough, after Lagos, our highest buyers uh, or highest traffic is in Abuja. But we don't have fiscal office there. And transactions are going on there. People are buying, people are selling. Even in Kaduna, we have farmers who we try to link up to uh, uh, the market in Lagos. And transactions are going on. Gradually, it's building up. You know, so um, all these competitions have helped us a lot, a lot. Because one, we are, we are, we are start up, we are bootstrapped, we are not funded, but we are $5,000 from Tony Rimeru. But these competitions at times, they have a way of uh, giving us media attention. Right? Like, yes, yes, like WeChat. Yeah, you know, we are uh, profiled by Think About, Think About. Even in Africa, we had a lot of uh, media attention, both uh, in India, South Africa, internationally. That some of them, the, the, the after effect is still, we are still feeling it until now. So, so startup founders in the South, South, in the South, they should make efforts to apply for some of this stuff. I mean, yes, they, like we called, we, ha we had a call for people to apply to pitch. Um, yes, we had some turn but I tell you, the numbers you saw, the numbers we have, I know that we have much more people doing more things here. Yeah, but we're a bit shy this way, I don't know why. Okay, so we should do more to participate in this kind of program, right? The, tr the truth, which is that we don't have a lot of time today, but hopefully, um, um, historians, historians, we should be able to profile you one of these days, and, we, and people should be able to talk, to be able to hear more uh, in depth about what you've done. So, before I let you go, can I ask you, in the next um, two years, in the next two years, what should we expect from Full Stand? What do you want us to say? Well, the vision of Full Stand is very big. I think it scares me. We're just doing the tip of what we intended. It's not just a marketplace, it's an ecosystem. Because aside the marketplace, we have a blog. Now, we discover that people, now, health consciousness is very high. People want to know what to eat, how to eat, how to be healthy. How about a blog? What does the blog do? It teaches people how to eat, what to eat, recipes, and the rest of them. In fact, the blog has more traffic than the marketplace. The blog has an average of 100,000 visits on, on the blog. So, we're looking at, we're looking at in the next uh, uh, two years, we're looking at attaining like 1 million users. We're looking at dominating the entire food supply chain in, Af in Nigeria. Yes. You understand? We're looking at bringing all the informal traders, food traders, in Nigeria on board food stand. They were doing that one at a time. Right now in Lagos, we have like uh, four or five major markets signed up. So if you want to shop in my 12 markets in Lagos, you can go to food stand there and shop for the traders there. Even in Podakot, yeah. We have some, although people in Podakot are slow to adopt the technology. We have some, my two, uh, what's it called, my one market you know, on the platform. If you want to shop in my one, you don't need to go there. You can come there and on the platform and shop for those traders. So we are looking at um, uh, dominating the entire food uh, supply chain in uh, Nigeria in the next two years. I'm sure some people want to know who delivers, who who who, does, who covers the logistics bit of all of this, the trailers or you? Okay, okay, it's a, it's a two prong approach or three rather. Logistics is very key in e-commerce, right? We have our delivery system in cities where we have fiscal presence. We have in Lagos, we have in Lagos. We just started our uh, PH logistic uh, recently last year, sorry, last uh, two months. But in cases where we don't have uh, our own, own delivery system, we use the sellers. But very few sellers have delivery system. So what do we do? We fall back the third party delivery system, which is not very efficient for us. So the long run is as we grow, we tend to cover the whole logistic ourselves, not uh, relying on the seller or on the third party uh, partners. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richard, for coming.